What's going on everyone, Josh Rozepka here and welcome to the 10th installment in my interview series where I spoke with 17 world-class trumpeters. In each one of these videos, I present one question and then you hear that question answered in sequence by all 17 trumpeters. As a reminder, here's who you'll be hearing from in order of today's video. Tina Tinghelseth, Karen Bliznik, Kenny Rampton, Randy Brecker, Arturo Sandoval, Selena Ott, Roger Ingram, Pacho Flores, Jose Cibaja, Chris Coletti, Brian Lynch, Ingrid Jensen, Lessie Vonner, Michael Sachs, Bijan Watson, Taga Larson, and Bria Skonberg. Today's video deals with what it takes to succeed in the music industry outside of playing the horn, because being a fantastic horn player and musician is only part of what it takes to succeed. So with all that in mind, I asked everyone the following question. Besides musical ability and technique, what is an essential skill to be successful in the music industry? What everyone had to say is incredible and a direct reflection of the success that they have all achieved. With that being said, let's hear what everyone had to say. I think the most essential thing is to be yourself and not try to be something you're not. And then I'm not only talking about the playing, I'm talking about the way you're branding yourself, uh, <laughs> the way that you think of yourself, the way you you kind of, uh, if you, maybe you think you want something, but then at the end of the day, maybe that's not it. You're trying to fit into some kind of box. Um, and maybe you had a plan, you had a dream, you had an idea, and then maybe it changed, but you, you didn't dare to even think that it could change or or you you wanted this job and you got it but then when you're sitting there it's like am, am I going to do this for the rest of my life how did this happen you know this is suddenly not my dream anymore so the whole thing of just like trying uh, and and just <laughs> this is really hard but trying to just look feel and just like think now and again just okay is this um where am i now what do i want um is this what i want and dare sometimes to just maybe trust that tingling little sensation that maybe this is not what i want anymore and and uh, what does that make me kind of um i think that's uh, essential but i mean that's essential in life i guess um but but because there is it's so easy to think that you um belong somewhere or you have a dream um and then ending up maybe reaching that dream but then that wasn't your dream anymore and then you will just be miserable so i just think really try to listen to yourself be true to yourself and just check in from time to time uh how it feels and then just Take it from there. <laughs> I mean, number one has to be, be be kind. I mean, it's I tell all my students, you will inevitably run into people that you have met at some point in your career, whether it be at a master class, whether it be at ITG like us. Um, and you don't know, I, I think this is maybe a slightly of a three-part answer, right? So being nice to one another, because it, first off, this is a small community. You know, you you will see each other um, and you will work together. And when there are a bunch of people that are working to create a community, it's a much stronger position. We already kind of know that, right? The next the next part of that would probably be being being humble. But that kind of is paired with being curious. Because for example, you know, in the orchestra, you have an opinion as to how something should go. Um, it's likely that maybe someone in my section actually also has an opinion as to how something should go, right? And so when I say being humble, it's being humble to be curious so that I can hear, um, to know that my choices aren't the ultimate choices, they're just choices that are made, right? And that to be open to the concept that people have greater opinions, greater ideas, things that maybe that you didn't think about yet. Um, so constantly being curious and learning instead of coming from the other side of things, um, because ideally, you know, there is, we are endlessly all learning. Um, and then the last one is, is being grateful because we're not all given this opportunity 
at all times. You know, we are, we are lucky to, in my opinion, we are lucky to be given a stage to perform your art. Um, and if you can focus, I think, on those things as being like the core values of being a good musician in this musical community, I think that you'll, you'll get very far. And if not, you will just make fabulous friends in the process um, and learn so much from one another. It's interesting. A year ago, I did a, um, a panel discussion for Jazz and Lincoln Center for the Jack Rudin uh, co collegiate uh, band competition, which is a shoot off of the, essentially Ellington, basically, but college level. And I led a panel discussion with myself, Bijan Watson, um, Camille Thurman, and Mark Whitfield, world famous guitarist. And that was the topic was how to how to have a successful career in music. And we each shared our stories. We each shared our paths. At the end of the day, it boiled down to three things. Number one, show up on time. Up to, on time doesn't mean it's a seven o'clock gig. You get there at seven o'clock. It means you're there a half hour ahead of time. You're set up, ready to go. You're, the, the band leader is at ease and calm, not stressed about you getting there. So at least half hour to an hour before the gig time. So be on time is number one. Number two, um, play, play. I mean, can, can I curse? <laughs> number two is play your ass off. All right. There's just no, no other option. You play the best of your ability and make sure the best of your ability when you play it, it's as well as it can be played, you know? And if, if you can do that, you know, you're going to be the, those two things. And number three, there, now there are a lot of guys who are cool with those first two things, but they struggle with number three. Number three is as simple as getting along with other people, you know, just be cool, get along, you know, those three things show up on time, play your ass off and get along with other people. You know, it's as simple as that. Um, those three things are a recipe for uh, for success in any field, you know, but yeah. certainly in music. Yeah. One thing, uh, and this is what I kind of did when I was younger. You can't just wait for the phone to ring. You know, my phone, uh, when I arrived in New York, I was really lucky. I had played at a couple jazz festivals and won a prize, won trumpet prize, and Clark, Clark Terry gave me the prize. He was a judge. Another festival in Vienna, I won second place trumpet uh, by a tenth of a point. Franco Ambrosetti, my old friend now, beat me by a tenth of a point, and I was given the award by Mel Lewis, and Art Farmer was a judge, Cannibal Adderley, J.J. Johnson, Mel Lewis, and Ron Carter. Boy, that was great. Now, that's a whole story with all great music, young musicians that were there. So when I came to New York, I started working pretty quickly because word got around. So my phone was ringing, but at the same time, I didn't want just a little slot for myself in New York. I wanted to try to express my own feelings and my own uh, ideas as far as music. Thus, I started writing music. So I think that's also important in anyone's development. And eventually, which eventually led to starting the Record Brothers Band, which originally was supposed to be a solo record, but the president of the record company, none other than Clive Davis, thought it was a good idea to call the band the Brecker Brothers, even though I had started it and written everything. And I procrastinated for about a week, but it was such a good opportunity to get on in on the uh, beginnings of Arista Records, which was formerly Bell Records. I said, okay, call it the Brecker Brothers, but there's a, gonna be a third horn because I had Dave Sanborn out front too. So he, I told Clive he could pretend to be the long lost cousin, but it was a good name, it caught on. But really create uh, uh, net, I guess the current words are, I would always be out on the scene but when I was younger, not all, because I wanted to hear the music but I wanted to make uh, connections. You know, I, I mean, Monk talks about that, you know, even being on the scene. Now, of course, there are all the social uh, networking sites that I guess uh, I don't, I just can't bring myself to do it, but a lot of uh, young musicians, and it seems to work to gain fans. It's something you unfortunately have to do. It's probably distasteful to a lot of good musicians. But really the main thing to do is just play as good as you can, keep getting better, ask to sit in, start your own bands, go to rehearsal bands, start writing. That's exactly what we did. We had a kind of a fusion rehearsal band with 
myself, my brother, Don Grolnick, Will Lee, Chris Parker, and Steve Kahn. Some guys were writing. Chris uh, uh, Grolnick was writing a lot. Steve Kahn was writing a lot. And that developed into being in the Brecker Brothers band. A good person, a good son, a good grandparents, a good friend, a good human being, man, with, you know, to really, because the, 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 uh, music is, is the, a, a way to share our feelings with people. And if your feelings are good, your music is going to be good. If you are a bad person with horrible feelings, that's what you're going to give to the audience. That's no good. Okay, so I think the most important thing, if you want to be a musician, um, um, as a soloist or orchestra player, is I think that you are stress resistant because if you are not, maybe you can do the job, but you will suffer, I think. Um, it will not be nice. And I think it is not fun that um, when you have to play concert that um, your body does not feel good, your mind does not feel good, you're scared or you have the feeling that you don't want to do that. So um, stress resistance and um, also that if a concert is not good, the, um, the ability to let go and to not think about it like four weeks afterwards. So, yeah, I think that's very important because it makes your life a lot easier. First of all, you got to be able to play at least to an acceptable level to where, I mean, where you can go into any gig and read it down or if you got to play a solo, you can play a solo and you can play in tune. I mean, I mean, to be able to have good basic musicianship skills, being able to play comfortably in every key, uh, at, uh, in every dynamic level, uh, and be able to be comfortable playing at any tempo, and be able to play in tune, and to observe dynamics, and be able to listen to other players, and to be able to play, you know. So your basic skill set, let's just assume that you have all that together. And that, that you can go in and then do any of these gigs. Well, then why do some people get hired and some people don't? And we're, we're assuming that we can all do that. We all are trained and we can go in and do these gigs. It's because, you know, part of my language, some people are assholes and some people aren't. And you can't go in being an asshole. And you, you got to be able to get along with people. And you got to be able to just spend a little bit of time uh, establishing uh, a rapport and some sort of a social relationship with people. I mean, when, when all those years I was on the road, someone would leave the band. Well, the first thing we would think of, who's the best player we can get? And then the second thing that we'd think of is that it's like, now, now we, we got to live with that person on a bus for about 10 months out of the year. So, that was a big deal. Who can we get out here that we can tolerate? Or who can we get out here who's going to be able to tolerate us? You know, so you're, the personal thing is a, is a big deal. A lot of people say, man, you know, I'm as good as that person. How come I'm not working? Well, there might be reasons for that, you know? The very fact that you're even asking that question puts people off you know you want to say what can i do for you let's like you know hi mr mr joe band leader um how can i make your band sound better what can i do for you you go in with that kind of an attitude and you're going to work and you're going to be involved you you almost you can't even think about it as working you just want to be involved I think it might have been Chuck Finley, because I've known him ever since I was a teenager. I think it was him who said to me early on, I said, here's the three magic steps of the music business. Show up, shut up, and play your ass off. And then when you're done, say thank you and go home. You know, it's kind of like, yeah, um, 
Let's see, let, let me see that question again. Um, besides musical ability and technique, what would you say is an essential skill to be successful in the music industry? Be interested, be there to serve, and, and be nice. Be a nice person, you know? And, and know when to shut up. Never miss an opportunity to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Very easy, the answer. Quality. Forget the circus. The most important is quality. It's the most essential. No? You, tell, you tell me, essential. The essential for me is quality, and that's it. You want to be... You want to record a CD, you have to think in quality with the cover, with the recording, the technicians, the orchestra, the, the music, the publisher, everything. Everything has ha, needs quality. Tenacity, never giving up. That's the number one thing in music. Because music is not a, an instant gratification uh, business. It's a completely the opposite. You will practice and you will practice and you will put time in and put time in and you will uh, uh, nurture context and you're this and that and blah, blah, blah. And sometimes it takes years for all those things to blossom, if they blossom. You, you can't take no for an answer. No needs to be a, 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 um, a vehicle of motivation. I know people that are that are I mean their tenacity is their 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 last name. I have this is something I have to work on, especially not in the music part of it. To me that's you know, I'm just that stubborn with that. But in the side in the business side of things, that's something I struggle with all the time. That's why I say when I was younger, I wish I would have had more influence in the business side of things. I think even more important than those are that people have to um, want to work with you, and that you could you could actually influence, <clears throat> you could change that about yourself. Even if you're not somebody that's necessarily popular, that doesn't really matter actually. But um, I'll tell you a story about Caleb Hudson. When I was playing my recital for my masters at Juilliard. I wanted to play a piece that had a big brass thing. It was actually the Bach Vivaldi that German brass arranged. And then I, they don't sell it. So I transcribed it and we played that for slightly different instrumentation. And in the rehearsal, in the second movement, there's like that trill where the first and second trumpet are in, in uh, thirds and the trills should be lined up nicely. And everybody was sort of just sight reading. These are all just friends. And he actually was less close with him than the other people. We were sort of a different age. He was a freshman and I was a, or second year sophomore and I was a second year masters. And he looked over at my finger in rehearsal and was like lining the trill up just right. And I was like, shit, he came prepared for my recital. This is awesome. And this was the rehearsal, the first rehearsal. And this was like an arrangement I'd written out myself, but it was like in that one moment, right? This was at this point, this was 12 years ago, 12 years ago. I remember it with crystal clarity. And when Canadian Brass needed a new trumpet player, I instantly thought of him. Now, of course, I allowed myself to be like, all right, well, let me think logically about this. But you can't ignore that gut instinct. And what was the gut instinct? In that one moment, he was able to demonstrate, A, that he's obsessed with music. B, he's obsessed with perfection and the chamber music. And C, he was like, it wasn't his project. This was my project. This was my recital. It wasn't like I was paying him. And he showed that it mattered enough to him for him to sound good, that it was going to elevate everything. And that was in you know, a, a half note. And so that's the kind of stuff that matters. If you get hired for a gig and you make the gig better because you were there, that's good. I know, I mean, you could probably think of, it's harder to think of them because they wind up getting lost, but they, if they were taken off the gig, taking them out of the section, it wouldn't really matter. You know, it wouldn't necessarily be better or worse. That's not great. Obviously, it's horrible if you make the section worse, both playing wise or vibes. You know, I know so many people that on the freelance scene would always comp kind of complain, but they were really bragging because they're trying to make it seem like they were this was like one of the worst gigs they were doing. There was like better gigs out there. It's like 
I don't care. Like, I never thought about that. I'm like, we're getting to play Beethoven, man. Like, I don't care. It's the worst orchestra I've ever played in my life. The conductor's dead. I had a conductor I thought died on stage. He fell asleep in the middle of Beethoven 3. I was just so happy to be playing Beethoven 3 up till that point. Then, then it started to suck. <laughs> but for somebody like me that I'm like so happy to just be playing somebody by Beethoven, or whoever the composer is, to have somebody complaining, I'm like, I don't want to ever play with this person again, you know? So that's the definitely the most important, your enthusiasm and like elevating other people's projects because they're the ones that are going to hire you, not your teachers. I think being a good person, knowing that you're a part of a community and supporting that community. Um, you know, there, there are things that, that anybody will tell you in, in, you know, 101 of the music business, like, you know, reliability, punctuality, those thing, those kind of things. Saying that you're gonna do, you know, doing what that you, doing what you say you're going to do, and doing it on time. Those things are important. Um, you know, I think that we all allow each other a lot of slack, but if you're the kind of person who really cares about everyone in your community and not just yourself and getting over and getting ahead, it's going to work out better for you in the end. You know, it's like coming on the scene, you're going to get most of your calls subbing for somebody. Now, you can go in and be a great player, but if you're trying to cop that person's gig right off the bat, you're probably not going to get called back, right? So you don't, you don't, you know, you know, be, be cooperation, you know, with with your peers. Trumpet players can be really cutthroat sometimes, but I've also felt that trumpet players can be quite a, you know, brother and sisterhood of of connected, mutually supportive mu musicians. This is something that I've tried to foster in, in my in my studio, in my teaching studio. And. I think the you know this is to me is what the the great players the the best players are always really down with each other you know there's not there's not this kind of cutthroat competition kind of thing I think when you see that it's with the players that are maybe not the greatest players so gravitate towards the good people they're they're, they're those are the ones who are probably have the most to offer and are go, and are going to be the most helpful to you. I think to be yourself and find a way to communicate who you are in whatever genre it is, it doesn't have to be jazz, but in a, in a way that you, people hear your voice instantly and say, oh, that's that person. To, to not try to copy something to the point of losing yourself, but to look, use, use rapid, uh, use, um, what's the word? Um, repetition and, 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 and copying someone to, to benefit your technique, but not to repeat what they did. And that's again, where the trumpet is so cool. There's so many sounds you can get out of it. And, and for me to just like, you know, dig in and see who I am from, a, from, from playing a, um, what are they called? Concone, from doing a Concone etude to playing you know, Bud Powell tune, where in there do I lose me and just become um, kind of a generic sounding trumpet player? And how can I not lose that? How can I, from, from the first breath, connect with my instrument so that it's, you know, somebody outside walking down the street goes, oh, wow, that's, I wonder what that instrument is. That's pretty. That doesn't sound like a trumpet, but I think it's a trumpet. Right, and, and I, I don't mean that as like disrespecting the tradition of great trumpet playing. I just, I think that there's, there's a way to still find a new path to do all of this. And the more, the more that we do that and the less we try to fill someone else's shoes, I think the better it is for our world and for our planet because it adds more character and more cultural influence and more, you know, more oomph as far as, as people mattering. 
this one you'd think would be common sense or like an easy one to do, but it's surprising like <laughs> how it isn't, is uh, like just being like a good person. And uh, yeah, that that's really it. Cause there's, I think so many mentalities in this music of like what it takes to like make it and like versus like competition and like all this other stuff. And it's just, I think that attribute more than like anything else like I've ever done musically has like helped me like be in certain spaces is because it's like, I, I realize we're all figuring it out and that everybody's human and you know, it's, whatever I can do to bring the best vibes to probably what usually is an already stressful situation, <laughs> depending on the gig, it's like, then I think that stands out. Also, it's like, nobody wants to be around like uh, a jerk, <laughs> I was about to cut like a jerk, you know, especially on some of these like long tours, it's like, nobody wants to be around that. It's like, just, just be a dope person, like, just be decent, and it's not even, like, going out your way to, like, um, try to, I don't know, kiss butt or, like, be the best, it's just literally just, you know, like, show up, do your, be able to do your job, like, it's whatever, and then that's it, but it's something I've seen a lot of people struggle with, so, yeah, just be a good person. Motivation and desire. I'd say that, you know, you've got to be motivated. No one's going to hand anything to you. There's a lot of people who would love to be doing this. I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's a lot like professional sports. A lot of people would love to be playing, you know, pick your sport, professional, but, you know, basketball in the NBA or, you know, baseball in the major league baseball or NFL or, you know, what have you, or, or playing golf on the tour. But, you've got to be motivated. You've got to be willing to, you know, assess yourself and figure out what are my strong suits and bolster them. What are my weak, you know, weaknesses and be able to figure out how to circumvent them and fix them. And then the desire to, you know, have the fortitude that, I mean, you're going to get knocked down. You're going to get humbled by, you know, by doing this. And there are going to be a lot of times when you're going to have some you know, those moments of self-doubt where you think, you know, can I do this? You know, am I, am I up to this? And those are the moments where you've got to have that inner fire and that inner desire to be able to say, yeah, yeah, I've got this in me and I'm going to, I'm going to figure out, you know, how to do this. You're going to, you know, you're going to get knocked down. Do you take that and do you slink away and, and they'll go do something else? Or do you take that and say, all right, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to figure out what I did wrong so I can avoid it and I could be better the next time. And it's kind of that kind of perseverance and that kind of determination and motivation that really anyone who's successful in anything has to have. And to me as a musician, that, you know, what we do is something that, you know, if, I mean, I'm very, very fortunate to be doing what I'm doing and have the, the vehicles that I have with my teaching and my playing and, you know, a group like, like the Cleveland Orchestra. I'm, I'm incredibly lucky. And, you know, I also never take that for granted. I never feel like I'm entitled to anything. I never feel like I'm handed anything or owed anything. To me, it's something that needs to be earned. And it's something that I feel like I need to substantiate and earn. And I earn that through my ability to, you know, keep my standards very high, my work ethic, my, you know, you know, my positive outlook on things. So, you know, that's, that's, that's a lot of thing to me to be, a, you know, to be somebody who's successful in music, you need to have those kind of attributes, you know, amongst, amongst many others, because to me, a lot of times, the most talented person isn't always the most successful person. It's got to be talent, meaning desire and motivation and creativity and ingenuity. 
And, you know, a lot of times I've seen the, the, the most talented. I mean, there are a lot of people who are a heck of a lot more talented than I am who can play circles around me with technique, but I'll outwork them. And, you know, a lot of times people with a lot of talent, I've seen kind of sit back and wait for it to come to them. And it's just, you have to have that motivation to always continue to want to evolve. I mean, really it's, yeah, the best, the best word for me to describe this is really curiosity. Having that ultimate curiosity to want to continue to evolve, to want to continue to search because and music is not an absolute. It's not a binary thing where there's, here's this package and that's all there is. I mean, it's an infinite amount of information, just a matter of how much motivation do you have and desire do you have to seek out information and to go find it. And to go figure it out. And you know, it's, it's a cliche, but the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. And that to me is the beauty of it. And that's really what, what motivates me to continue that search. And you know, the guys that I admire, you know, the guys like you know Winton or Arturo or Wayne Bergeron or Doc Severinsen or um, you know, Phil Smith or Tom Stevens or Chris Martin or, you know, Gabor Tarkovi. I mean, you can name, I can name dozens of other people, you know, they all have that. And to me, that's, that's incredibly inspiring. You need to treat your craft as a business. You need to understand how to present yourself from a business standpoint and really understand what your strengths and weaknesses are so that when people address you or call you for certain things, you can be prepared for them and understand how to prepare for them. Um, you don't ever want to be caught in a situation, especially in a recording situation or even in a musical and you're in the pit or something like that. And, you know, maybe it's beyond you at this point. Um, and so you have to really uh, treat yourself like a business and understand that. And also set goals for yourself again. What, what do you want to achieve? And, and I think, um, you know, from another, from another standpoint, you have to set financial goals for yourself. This whole concept, and I think it's been a disservice to a lot of musicians and my colleagues over the years, several generations, is this concept of it's okay to be a starving artist. And I think... I mean, if, if that's what, if that ends up being your, you know, and then starving is maybe a little bit much, but if you don't, if you don't have a plan or a goal for what you want to achieve, you know, you, listen, the, this, this idea that you're going to be a, a solo artist that's going to generate hundreds of thousands of dollars every year in revenue is, um, uh, is, is, is possible. Anything is possible. But if you don't have a plan or a goal, a realistic goal of, and understand about what your strengths are and how you can contribute, then you will not achieve that. You just won't. People aren't just going to call you up and say, Hey, you know, that's not how it works. Um, it works by building a community. And um, I hate the word network, but friendships and mentoring with people to understand what you do and do well and, and building up a, a you know, a, a name for yourself that, that, that is authentic. So if someone says, Hey, Bichon's a great lead player. You should call him for this. You know, you should uh, have earned that. Um, and, and make the people that referred you proud that they referred to you. <laughs> um, so I, I think that's important. Is it not enough musicians? And I try and t talk about this in my master classes and clinics and stuff that, you need to think think of yourself more as a business and really take stock in yourself and invest in your in the right uh, gear and, and and invest in your recording setup and invest in um, time in you know websites understanding social media you don't have to be on all the platforms but you have to understand how they work you know so it's it's important uh, setting up a business uh, you know. Um, incorporating if you feel necessary. So it, that's, that's the thing I think is the most important thing. A collaborative mindset. So 
going beyond just being a great player, working hard, practicing all the time, is realizing, you know, whatever situation is, that there's going to be someone there that's going to be better than you, someone that you might be better than. And uh, just going with the idea that you want to sound great as a section. I think to succeed in this industry, you need to have a good sense of humor. <laughs> just take it one day at a time and find the beauty, the hilarity in every situation, because you'll find yourself in a lot of funny, funny situations. Wow, what incredible answers. Uh, if you've been enjoying these videos, why don't you hit that like and subscribe and let me know in the comments below which answer resonated with you the most. I really love this question because it shows that success is not an accident. It is deliberate and curated, and it speaks to who we are as people and how we lead our lives both professionally and personally. Now, I really resonated with a lot of this advice, so it's it's tough to pick just one as a favorite, but I will say as someone who has toured, someone who has been on the road, uh, the point of being someone who is easy to get along with and you know low drama is so important. Now, today's advice will no doubt inspire and motivate us to greater success, and that leads us to the next question. What do you do to challenge yourself on a daily basis and stay motivated? Now, personally, I am stoked for this next one, and I am sure that what everyone has to say will inspire every single one of you. All right, that's all I've got for you today. I want to thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.